All right, guys, welcome back. This video is going to specifically talk about imagery, the idea of showing, not telling our reader. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Okay, so what is imagery? The definition is that it is description that engages the senses, touch, taste, smell, hear, and see. And then I've got this little caveat down here. Let me get my pen out here. Um, down here that says the idea of showing not telling involves imagery in that we want the reader to not only understand the story the author is telling but we want the reader to feel like they are actually experiencing the story right alongside the characters so if you talk about um, the house smelled good well that doesn't tell me anything but if you say the house smelled like the uh, the residents had just been baking, you know, fresh cookies, then that's going to make me recall what fresh cookies actually smell like. And it will feel like I am in the house with the characters. Okay. So we want to use imagery to help our readers, um, engage and feel, um, connected to your story. All right. So these, the examples that I'm going to give you, um, I think they're both from Harry Potter, um, if I'm remembering correctly. So as I go through, I'm actually going to, going to underline the various um, examples of imagery within the, the example that I've given, okay? So the storm raged more and more ferociously as the night went on. Harry couldn't sleep. He shivered. Okay, that gives us that feel idea and turned over again feel trying to get comfortable his stomach rumbling with hunger again that gives us that taste or that um, the idea of eating right Dudley's snores there we go with a, a sound one were drowned by the low rolls of thunder that started near midnight the lighted dial C of Dudley's watch which was dangling over the edge of the over the edge of the soft, let's see, looks like I've missed a word. I think it says of the soft bed on his fat wrist, told Harry he'd be 11 in 10 minutes time. He lay and watched, okay, so we've got feel and see, watched his birthday tick nearer, wondering if the Dursleys would remember it all, wondering where the letter writer was now. Now, if you're familiar with Harry Potter, this is when, uh, Hogwarts is trying to get the invitation to Harry to come and be a wizard at Hogwarts and study wizardry. Um, and the Dursleys actually take Harry and Dudley out into this, the middle of the sea on this tiny little island to try to hide. Um, so it's talking about, you know, the storm and how Harry can't fall asleep and he's hungry. And, um, but as you read through the actual text, you engage more, more deeply with it because you can put yourself in that situation. You can, you know, you know what it feels like to be hungry. You know what it feels like to not, to be able, not be able to get comfortable in bed, to listen to someone snoring, to hear thunder, um, to, you know, you can almost see this watch that's too bright in your eyes on your fat cousin's wrist, right? Um, it gives us all of these very rich images that help us engage um, and invest more wholly and deeply with our story. All right, another example. This is from Cinder um, by Marissa Meyer, if you're familiar with that book. Again, we're looking for sense imagery. A green light flickered. Okay, so that gives us sight, it's the C, beside the android sensor, and the door opened into a white tiled hallway. Again, C. The Medroy wheeled, so now we're getting into feel. Cinder's exam table out of, the, out of the lab, past the mirror. The corridor was empty and smelled of bleach, and one of the table's wheels squeaked in time with the android's treads. Okay, so we've got a couple different examples of C, right? The green light flickering, the white tiled hallway uh, being wheeled out of the exam room, uh, the empty corridor, but it, then we've got um, smell, smelled of bleach, and we've got here, it squeaked, the table's wheel squeaked in time with the android's treads. So again, um, really good 
use of sense imagery to help the reader more fully engage and invest in the story. All right, and what you guys are now going to do, um, again, my slide got cut off. I apologize for that. Um, so this down here, let's see, touch, taste, smell here. C, I think is what's supposed to be at the bottom right there. Um, so this is a picture. Uh, I want you to use sense imagery to describe this picture. So your picture should include, or your description should include, um, let's do three, at least three of the five different senses. Um, please use to describe this picture. Um, you are welcome to pause the video right now and do this as your, um, as the activity in Canvas that goes along with this station in our writer's workshop. Okay. Um, but again, you're going to pretend like this is part of the setting of your story. Come up with five statements to awaken the senses of your audience. Um, let's just do three, three statements, pick the three uh, that you want, because it's hard to use senses like taste, right? In the forest, all you could say, um, you can taste the ice in the air or something like that, which will give you a sense of how cold it is or how maybe humid it is, right? Okay, and then let's do another example. So again, this got cut off down here at the bottom. This should be C. Um, again, you're going to take this picture. This is, looks like a busy coffee shop. They, there looks like they're selling muffins and um, various hot beverages. Uh, people are working on their laptops. Um, so this again, pretend like this is part of the setting of your story. Come up, let, let, let's do five statements on this time, this time, five statements to awaken the senses of your audience. So one for each of the senses. So if you put your character in this setting within this picture, what would they touch? What would they taste? What would they smell here? What would they see? Okay. So one statement for each. And again, um, as you go back, as we're still in our editing and revision process for our writers, um, our writing unit, I want you to take what you are learning with imagery and apply it to your actual writing. Um, if you've got characters that are in various situations, um, using this sense imagery uh, to describe what they're seeing and feeling and touching and tasting, all of those things will help your reader more fully engage um, and invest in your story, okay? All right, so make sure that you take what you've learned and you apply it to your writing. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. That's it for today.